Sego Sketo Ani, it's Aaron again. This is our last session. All right, so I hope you've enjoyed the past five sessions. I know they're a little bit long, some are a little bit short. But my job here today is just to share a little bit about First Nations culture and some of the stories and teachings. Now, as I said earlier, I own a dance company called White Pine Dancers. And what we wear, we always call it regalia or our outfits. We never call them costumes. Costumes are something that's around Halloween to hide who you are. We call it a regalia because it enhances who we are as First Nations people. All right? So we're going to talk a little bit about the why our people dance. Dance, dance is, also, is a form of physical exercise, plus it makes your heart feel good. Right? But for our people, it's also a form of prayer. Right? One of the stereotypes about First Nations people is that we always did the rain dance. Right? We did do the rain dance, but we weren't actually sitting there begging for rain. We weren't saying, please, please, please give us rain. That wasn't what the dance was all about. The dance was more about giving thanks for the gift of rain. Right? So when we were dancing as a form of prayer, if, it was, if there was drought, what we thought was that we were not being thankful enough for the gift of rain from the Creator. So we had to show the Creator that we were very thankful and grateful for the gift of rain so He could return it to us. So when we did the rain dance, it was not saying, please, please, please. It was saying, thank you, thank you, thank you for the rains that have given to us in the past. Right? So the beat that we would play um, when, when, when we dance always represented the heartbeat of Mother Earth. Right? So Mother Earth is round. So the drum always represents the heartbeat of Mother Earth. Right? So the only beat we'd hear from the drum is one that sounds like a heartbeat. Sorry, my drum's a little bit dead because it's so humid out. Right, this is all deer hide here. So the, the, the more humid it is outside, the more moisture gets into the hide, and it loosens the hide up. Right, so when it's air conditioned or, or it's a little bit cooler outside, these things, the sinew tightens up and the drum becomes much more tighter. Right? But the beat of the drum always represents the heartbeat of Mother Earth. Just like our own heartbeats. For the powwow beat, powwow beats are like this. but it still represents the heartbeat of Mother Earth. So when our people dance, we always touch our feet to the ground in time to the heartbeat of Mother Earth. And we're taught not to stomp. Right? We're taught to dance lightly upon the grasses. Because right? we want that grass to grow after we're gone. Right? So we don't want to kill the grass, we just want to bend it down after we leave. Right? That's what our grass dancers are for. The regalia that they wear has long flowing fringes. That represents the tall prairie grasses that still do grow west to this day. And the movements are about bending down the grasses. So there's lots of swirls, there's lots of steps. That's what the grass dance is for. Right? So this is my hand drum. Right? That's why it's, on, that's, it's really loose right now. That's because of the weather, that's all. Right? Right, so that's the hand drum. What I'm wearing here is called a ribbon shirt because it has ribbons. Mm -hmm. So when uh, people go to church, their parents tell you, if you're going to go to church, you must always dress respectable in order to let the God know that you respect his teachings and everything else. So this is what the ribbon shirt is for us as well. Whenever we wear the ribbon shirt, whether it be Longhouse or Day One Lodge, it's about showing respect for the Creator. So our children are taught the same thing, always dress respectful where you're giving words to the Creator, right? So I always wear a ribbon shirt or something like that where I'm sharing teachings, doing storytelling, I'm on stage with white pine dancers, or anything like that, I always wear the ribbon shirt to show proper respect and caring. Now what I wear on my feet usually are these things here. These are called mucklucks, right? I don't know whether you can see it from close there, but that's, that's the muckluck. It has moose hide, a rabbit fur, and on the inside is more rabbit fur, and then there's these drawstrings right here. Now this, these come up to about uh, the middle of my lower leg. Now, <clears throat> they originated with the northern, with the northern nations. Right? So Anishinaabe, Cree, all, the, all those nations had, had the, uh, the mucklucks. But one of the teachings that I heard was that, like nowadays, the girls wear the mucklucks. Mostly it's the girls who wear the mucklucks. But what the teachings that I heard is that up north, long ago, it was the men who would wear the mucklucks. And the men would wear the mucklucks because they were the ones going off into the snows and hunting. So what we used to do is we used to rub the hide with a sap from the tree. 
and that would make the hide waterproof. Right? So when you're going off into the deep snows, you wanted to keep your legs nice and warm, so that's why they would go up to mid thigh. So it wasn't until the 1950s or 40s, so I was told, that there was a, a, a fashion designer from Paris, France. Uh, <clears throat> fashion designer is one who designs clothes, obviously. So he, uh, he came over and he saw the men wearing these mucklucks, and he thought to himself, hmm, those would look good on girls, but it needs something. It needs to be smaller. It needs to be fluffier. But there's still something missing. Pom-poms. We've got to add pom-poms to the mucklucks. Right? So now you see girls wearing these mucklucks with the pom-poms on the side. Right? Us men, we never wore pom-poms. Usually on the side of our ties was either flint or steel or something you could use to help you survive when you're off in the bush. Because when, long ago, we didn't have Canadian tires, shoppers, drug market, grocery stores. Everything we wore had to serve many different purposes. Right. So this necklace here, this is one of the personal ones that I make just for myself. <coughs> they represent bear claw. These are not real bear claw, they're just made out of wood. Right? So that's that's why I wear those. These things, this is just necklace and it looks cool and it matches along with this and this. Right? So that's that's what I have there. Sorry, little one. Then these are called deer toe rattles. I see so you can get a closer look at them there. Those are actual deer toes that are on there, right? And that's what it sounds like. So when our dancers would dance long ago, it would sound like this. So that's just one for one leg. So just imagine that there's 50 to 60 people out there all dancing at once. Nowadays, a lot of our dancers, they wear jingles or bells, right? Those jingles and bells, that sound, I, don't know if, I remember earlier when I was talking about the rain sitting the roofs of our homes, those bells and jingles represent the sound of the rain sitting the roofs of our wigwams and our longhouses. Because it would draw the people in. Because right? our people were just like everybody else. When it started rain, we didn't want to get wet. So we ran into the longhouse of the wigwam. Because uh, our clothes were deer hide and moose hide. And if they got wet and they weren't dried properly, they, were, they became very fragile. They could tear easily. So it wasn't like, if, oh, geez, I got a rip on my shirt, throw it out, go to Walmart, spend five bucks, get another shirt. Not like that a long time ago. A long time ago, it took weeks to make a shirt. Because you had to go hunting, you had to tan the hide, you had to skin the deer, you had to color the hide, you had to sew the shirt. It just took a long time, so you always had to be very respectful of your, of your clothing. And it's the same thing with our regalia. When, when we design, when we do these things, it's a, a lot of our dancers, especially, well, all dancers, with white pine dancers, all of our, our, our dancers make design their own regalia. Uh, the men's traditional dancers, they can weigh up, the, the regalia can weigh up to 100 pounds, right? It can co cost up to $5,000 to $6,000 for all the materials. Uh, women's jingle dress dancers, they can weigh up to 70 pounds. The jingle dress dance, <clears throat> you can look this up on YouTube, right? Under white pine dancers, you'll see what I'm talking about. You see the men's traditional dancers, you'll see the women's just jingle dress dancers, and so on and so forth. But the jingle dress dancers, the jingle dress is a healing dance. And so, the women are the life bearers, they're the water keepers because they have the gift of life within them. So, long ago, there was an old, uh, an old man who was very sick. He had a granddaughter. And the granddaughter went out and she created a dress. And this dress had 365 deer toes on. And when she danced this dance for her grandfather, the illness was taken from the grandfather and the grandfather lived basically so this dress has evolved to what we see nowadays at power right but each one of those cones or deer toe represents one day of the year so 365 cones when a jingle dress dancer is making her very first dress she has to make her own dress first and she's only allowed to add one cone per day for 365 days so it takes her a year to create her dress to create her regalia that teaches self-confidence self-reliance self-respect and respect for her own regalia, right? And same thing with men's traditional, same thing with, with grass, same thing with men's chicken dance. It's not the same kind of chicken dance where you go, to, no, 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 no. No, it's not the same kind of thing, right? The chicken dance is a, it's more of a show-off dance, right? Because out in the prairies, there's a, a, the, the prairie chicken. And the prairie chicken, when he's looking for a mate, they'll perform a funny little dance. 
So when the chicken dancers, men, when chicken dancers go out and they dance, they're always dancing with their chests out. And they're always preening and, and showing off. A lot of times they'll show mirrors to, to look at themselves in the mirror to show, hmm. Right? It's just like girls with some of those cell phones and their selfies all the time. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but that's what, that's what chicken dance is. Right? And the last thing I have to show you is my traditional cell phone. This is that. No, I'm just kidding. This is our coyote pelt. This is our new one. So he was taken in the spring because his fur is not winter thick fur. So if you look closely at it there, you can see his, his fur is very close to the skin. Right? If it came from winter, his fur will be a little bit more thicker. There's some winter fur right there. So there's winter fur right there. It's a little bit longer than, than this stuff. Right? But in the winter time, his whole entire coat is covered with this big thick fur. And in the inside is his fluff. And that's what keeps Coyote nice and warm. So this guy, there's his, there's his face, there's his ears. Right? And his claws are on there too. Which, where are they? There they are. I don't know whether you can see that or not. There's his claws. There's his claws. I don't know if you can see that or not. There's claws right in there. See his claws? Right, so that's that's coyote. Right. We had we had this is our second coyote. The first coyote had a had, his name was Fred. And he was gifted to us by our elders. White Pine Dancers started at a place called Kanata Native Village in Bradford, Ontario. One of the first shows that we performed at was for our elders, our gray hairs, the ones who are very knowledgeable. So we were doing our thing, laughing, dancing, drumming, and singing. And after the show was done, we looked out in the audience, and all our elders are like this. And we didn't know what we were doing wrong. Like, what did we do wrong? Why can't we make our elders? If we can't even make our elders smile, how are we going to make our children smile? All children. So we were backstage kind of depressed. But then a little old man came back with his little walker. And he, came, he told us to come with him. And he brought us out to the parking lot. And in his pickup truck, his old beat-up pickup truck, was a coyote pelt. And he brought it out, and he held it in his arms, and he says, This is Coyote. To my people, Coyote is trickster. He's a teacher. So, when I was looking at you laughing, dancing, and drumming, and smiling, and having fun being First Nations, and being proud of you, it made my heart and my spirit smile, but I could not smile upon my face because I, I grew up in a residential school. I was taught that anything Native was wrong. My dances were wrong. Songs were wrong. Language was wrong. So I was taught never to smile about being First Nations. But when I saw you up there, you guys, girls, even children, <clears throat> dancing, drumming, and singing, and being proud of who you were, it made my heart smile, and my spirit smile, and I was very proud. And he gifted us a coyote pelt. And he told us, whenever you go on stage, whether it be storytelling, dancing, drumming, singing, make sure coyote is between you and the audience. And whenever you feel shy, nervous, or scared, all you have to do is look down at Coyote. And remember to share your culture just like Coyote does. Because whenever you see Coyote out in the wild or on TV or in pictures, he always has a wicked grin upon his face, a glint in his eye, and his tongue hanging out. So that's kind of sort of how White Pine works. We love having fun when we're on stage. We laugh and we joke. We play with the audience. We have fun with ourselves most of all. And with, with White Pine Dancers, it doesn't matter if you haven't seen each other for, for, for months or eight months. When we get backstage after, the, after a long time, it's just, just like we just met each other yesterday again. And so that's one of the things that we miss as, as performers, as being up on stage and sharing our gifts with you. Uh, we miss interacting with, with people. We miss interacting with our friends and family. But... As news reports and everybody, I hate to repeat it, but we all, we all have to work together because we're all in this together. So, uh, if you're working and you're a central worker, many nyawish to me, wish thank you so much for all your hard work and all the risks that you're taking for all of us. Uh, for all the rest of us out there, we just have to be patient and uh, stay isolated and just stay home. Wash your hands, put on masks, um, uh, practice social distancing, that sort of stuff. Right. So that's that's pretty much my time with you guys. I had fun uh, dodging the cat and the, and the dog, which I didn't really get to see too much, but that's okay. <laughs> um, 
Our people never ever say goodbye. We always say see you soon. Right? The only time we did say goodbye is, is when a loved one had passed away. Right? So we always say see you soon because uh, like you don't want to say goodbye to somebody if they're on a long journey. Because long ago, when, when people would go off, they wouldn't just go to the grocery store and be back two hours later. They would be gone for weeks if not months. So you never ever wanted to say goodbye because that meant I'm never going to see you again. You always wanted to say see you soon or safe journeys. So the way you say that in Mohawk is you say Ona Ogweho. So you say Ona Ogweho, and that's how you say see you soon in Mohawk. In Ojibwe, you say Bamapi. Bamapi. That means see you soon. So on behalf of all myself and all the White Pine dancers who performed and all the educators, drummers, singers, dancers, on behalf of all of us to the city of Burlington and those who are outside watching this, Ona Ogweho and Bamapi. And remember, White Pine Dancers YouTube, White Pine Dancers Facebook, whitepinedancers.ca internet. If you have any questions, you can contact the city of Burlington, they can pass it on to me, or you can reach me at the numerous contacts on those three places where I just left you off. All right, so on behalf of Jack, Coco Bean, and I, and the rest of my family to you, we wish you a safe and happy journey. We hope to see you all again very, very soon. Ona Guayho, Bama B.